From WWL-TV Channel 4, this is an Eyewitness News special, Campaign 2017, The Mayoral Debate. Good evening, I'm Karen Swenson, and welcome to the final televised debate before Saturday's New Orleans mayoral election. Joining us in the studio tonight are three of the top candidates, positioned left to right in alphabetical order, former civil court judge Michael Bagneris, current city council member Latoya Cantrell, and former municipal court judge Desiree Charbonnet. Thank you all for being here. Well, there are a total of 18 candidates in the race, the candidates were selected to participate tonight by virtue of their standing in the WWL-TV New Orleans Advocate poll conducted with the sampling of registered Orleans Parish voters. To make the debate field, a candidate had to register 5% or more in that poll. Yes. We also want to point out that we have partnered with the Committee for a Better New Orleans for tonight's program and several of their members are in our audience. We do ask our audience to hold your applause until the end of the program so that we can focus on the discussion. Now, in our first round, we'll ask a question to which each candidate will have 90 seconds to respond. And you will hear this sound. Can we hear the chime? All right, we're gonna hear a chime, I promise. There it is, when your time is up. So please try to keep your answers to the time allotted. And we should point out that the order of our first set of questions was determined by a random drawing. And I just, we're gonna start with Judge, we're gonna start with Councilwoman Kentrell. In our recent WWL-TV advocate poll, 72% of voters we surveyed said crime was the most important issue facing our city, ranking it a 10 out of 10. With that in mind, how specifically would your administration plan to fight crime, address the NOPD manpower shortage, and pay for your initiatives? Would it include a tax increase? Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, my plan definitely does not include a tax increase. Uh, I have uh, been on the New Orleans City Council for over five years managing and scrubbing that budget and getting it passed. I know for a fact that there are adequate resources to implement my plan. My plan is holistic. It's not just centered around the New Orleans Police Department, but criminal justice reform across the board. We definitely have to also stabilize our environments in which people are living in. I've quoted saying, nothing stops a bullet like a job. So we do have to link our people to real opportunities, workforce development and training. Of course, programs, uh, Nord C, youth development programs are needed as well. But the holistic approach is what's going to make our city safer, stabilize our environments, and of course, ensuring that we have a police chief that has the authority to do the job, experience in neighborhood policing strategies, building up our people, connecting those dots so that our folks truly do trust law enforcement, but become a partner in increasing uh, safety throughout the city of New Orleans. Now, you did just mention there are plenty of resources to pay for this, like, like what? Well, one, we have the budget, the largest budget for the New Orleans Police Department exists right now. Over 65% of our general fund going to public safety. Uh, just as we're about to approve a pay increase uh, for police officers based on retention. But on the New Orleans City Council, we've previously approved pay increases for also recruitment. There are adequate resources. I was very instrumental at scrubbing the books and identifying those dollars for this recent pay increase. When the administration was yet coming to the New Orleans City Council, preparing to put a millage on this ballot. All right, Judge Charbonnet, same question. Thank you. Um, first of all, what the citizens need to know is that I am the only candidate running that has dealt with crime on a day-to-day -day basis, day in and day out, for the last 10 years as a judge at municipal court. Now, as a judge, I have seen what causes crime, I've seen how we can prevent crime, and I've seen how we can deter people from the criminal justice system. I also work with NOPD every single day in court. Uh, 
every day I would see officers and as these numbers started to decline I could see the morale declining at the same time so the first thing we have to do is retain the officers that we have right now it's vitally important we had a hiring freeze for almost two years which did not allow us to hire any new officers we have also relieved the residency requirement uh, that also really prevented us from casting a wide net in terms of recruitment so I'm glad those two steps have been taken I'm also glad that civil services um, approved the the raises for the officers but we've got to retain then we're going to start looking at officers who've moved laterally some of the officers we la we've lost to Jefferson Parish and other neighboring parishes and bring those back we have recently retired officers that we can bring back as well but crime the crime we have now certainly we need to deal with presently but there's also the crime we want to prevent on the front end by beginning very early early childhood education head start programs mentorship programs youth jobs through the city of New Orleans that really help prevent crime as well my plan is online uh, it's a comprehensive crime plan and I plan to increase zero taxes and you do have an ambitious goal of hiring up to 100 officers a year uh, a year how would you pay for those I can still answer right? yes yes course. all right so I have looked at some other sources of uh, income that the city is looking looking uh, looking at receiving I should say we have the World Trade Center development coming online now that off that one development is projected to bring about 13 million dollars that's early projections I think it's going to do even more we're going to have the Four Seasons Hotel at the bottom then there are going to be condominiums above that each one of those condominiums are considered separate pieces of property. So not only will we have sales taxes, we're also going to have property taxes that's going to be coming in from there as well. Uh, the city will also receive a lease payment yearly. So that's one place that we can at least start looking. Thank you, Judge. Mm -hmm. Judge Bagneris. Well, first I have to mention the fact that uh, the crime that wreaks fear into everyone is uh, murder, rape, robbery, burglary. Municipal court judges don't deal with any of that type of crime. Uh, now, in terms of dealing with that type of crime, we have to do several things. First of all, crime is up because police manpower is down. We have to improve our numbers in the police department. We have to. Uh, and we have to pay police like our lives depended upon it because, quite frankly, our lives do depend upon increasing the, uh, increasing the pay. Now, when we do that, uh, when, when we increase, we're talking about increasing across the board, not selective units. Uh, we're talking about an across the board uh, pay raise for the police department. That's going to help with retention and that's going to certainly help with recruitment. In addition to recruiting uh, and retaining our police officers, we have to act smartly, which means we have to give them the tools that they need. We have to allow them to get out of the dark ages and into the 21st century, technologically speaking. Now again, how would you pay for all this? Well, first of all, the, uh, the payment is already in the budget. Uh, if you notice, 2018 already demonstrates that there's a $10 million increase. It also indicates that there will be an increase over the next three years of $30 million, almost averaging $10 million uh, a year. That's already there. That's according to the estimates that, the, uh, that this present administration gave. But let's say they're wrong. Even if they're wrong, given the budget that we have of approximately $614 million of general revenue, any good executive could find a 2% difference in that to deal with the pay raise, and I'm a good executive. All right, Judge, thank you. Moving on to our second question. The other issue in our poll that ranked just below crime was drainage and flooding, something we've dealt with several times this, uh, this summer. The BGR says it's going to cost $54.5 million a year through 2026 to fix and maintain the city's crumbling infrastructure. How would your administration foot the bill and would you support a stormwater management fee? Judge Charbonnet, we'll start with you. The first thing we need to do is at least use the money that is there now to start working on improving infrastructure and sewage and water board. We have yet to scratch the surface on the $2.4 billion that's in the budget, capital projects budget. Now, a majority of that is a FEMA reimbursement program, but however, we haven't gotten that started. I think once we do that, we need to get that program started, get the jobs working, get the, pro the uh, streets to, um, in good repair. Then after we've shown that we can use that money wisely, and effectively, then we can ask the federal government for, government for more. Um, but until we at least, we, we, we haven't even been able to show that we can start these projects as, as effectively as we should, 
with what we have. Um, you asked whether I would impose a stormwater fee. Would you support a stormwater no, fee? No, not now. I, uh, people are tired. People have been paying fees and high taxes, and they should at least get the services that they deserve right now before anybody can ask them for another fee. All I, right, I Judge Bagnaris. There's no question that the storm, a stormwater fee is off the table in a Begnaris administration. We cannot, we absolutely cannot continue to burden our citizens with fees, particularly since after they pay the fees that have been requested, the citizens have done their job. We've already asked several times for an increase in fees, and they have passed the increase. What do we have to show for it? Where, where, what can we show in terms of performance that a fee, an increase in fee, has delivered for the citizens? Zero. So there would be no increase in fees. Now what we will do is we will take those hated crime cameras. Uh, if we can't get them off the books, then what we will do is take every penny that's, uh, that's delivered from the crime cameras, and that's estimated to be $25 million. Uh, we will go ahead every year and put that $25 million uh, towards uh, helping out with the uh, streets and infrastructure. All right, let's move on to uh, Councilman Cantrell, and I know you've talked about having, everybody has to have a little skin in the game. Everyone does have to have skin in the game. Currently, the burden does rest upon those who are paying property taxes, so I do agree that they cannot take any more. However, we do have to level the playing field so that everyone does put skin in the game. And this does speak to our nonprofit community and others that are just not paying in. And it's not paying into drainage. The increases that we have seen over the past several years have been on the sewer side because we are under a consent decree. But zero is going into drainage. Only those 40 percent there that are paying property taxes. We're going to have to do things differently. It's going to be also getting more of our resources generated off of our hospitality industry here in our city. Currently we only retain 1.5 percent. So I'm going to work with our delegation, our state delegation, the New Orleans City Council, the business community, the hospitality community, so that we can be unified going to Baton Rouge, making the case that where New Orleans goes, the state goes, and we need to be self-sustaining, and those dollars that are generated here, we can do it. Stormwater management fee, I do not uh, believe that that is necessary if, in fact, we build in to where people are putting skin in so the game. If I hear you correctly, you only support it for nonprofits at this stage. Uh, nonprofit communities in terms of, again, you have to do the cost-benefit analysis because they do offer a lot of benefits to the city of New Orleans. But everyone has to pay something. So okay. you would have a levelized uh, fee schedule or plan okay. to them for put money in the Thank bank, you, put skin in the game. Thank you. It's necessary. All right. Among all of the issues, all of the issues the city is currently facing, race relations ranked among the top three issues of concern in our community. Some would point to the recent Confederate monuments controversy, the national anthem issue, and the rancor of the last presidential campaign as signs of division. What would you do to try to unify this city at this point in time? Please be specific. We'll start with you, Judge Bagnaris. Well. The, the, the issue of race is one that we have to stop talking about and start doing something about. Uh, we have, and we still have, we have um, implanted in our system natural uh, barriers, particularly to African Americans uh, being able to succeed. We have to, we have to uproot those barriers. And once, once we start doing that, uh, we will find that the problems with race will go away because it's not really about black and white. It's about green. You know, we have to, as soon as we allow an opportunity for each race or all races to be able to achieve wealth in this country so that everybody is able to get the education they want, get the, um, uh, uh, to support their families, you know, have a decent job. Once we start dealing with exposing our folks to green, you know, then the question of black and white really dissolves. All right, financial and economic barriers, I hear you raising those barriers. Uh, Councilwoman Cantrell, how would you answer that question? How would you unify our city? 
Well, one, uh, our, our people do feel divided. Uh, we have been told that it's a zero-sum game, neighborhoods pitted against one another, people feeling disconnected from growth and opportunity, even that we've seen in the past uh, 12 years. So I would start where people live in their built environment, ensuring that their areas, their neighborhoods are clean, getting the trash out of their eyes, uh, spurring economic development, like in New Orleans East, Algiers feeling left out, the Ninth Ward. We have to meet people where they are. They have to feel the love, not only from government, but from the citizenry. So I would build community as I've demonstrated my ability to do in our city, working across racial lines, not just race, but, but also social economic lines. We have to bring people together. And the best way to do it, again, is to show them not just talk about it, but truly be about it. And you meet them where they are, where they live, make them connected to growth and opportunity in our city. That's the best way. All right, thank you very much, Councilwoman. Judge Charbonnet. <laughs> Well, the first thing I think we need to do is we need to have a very healthy discussion uh, with all sides on the monument issue as to how we're going to agree on what's going to replace them. I think that the problem with the way it was done is that enough people didn't feel like they had, they had a voice and, and a say in how this was all, um, you know, how it all came together. But uh, when we bring people together and we make them feel like their voice is heard and it matters, then we can have a consensus, excuse me. I think we unify people and people come together when they see progress in general. Um, it's something everybody can agree on, no matter if you're black, white, Latino, other, Asian, everybody agrees on progress and that makes everybody happier across the board. People are generally in, in a better place in their community when they see progress. Um, I have been thinking about how um, so many young African American males um, fear the police officers. I want to bring back a much stronger cops program. I want to bring back the officer friendly program. I also am considering bringing in a young cadets program with NOPD um, that would allow young people to participate, understand police, how they, how they work and why they operate as they do. But one of the best things we can do is come together. I think it's a great start to at least start getting together and renaming how we're going to, um, how we're going to rename these monuments as well. And jobs, you know, people feel like they're included when they have an opportunity. 44% of working age black males are unemployed in this town. Just curious, the Robert E. Lee uh, monument, what would you like to see there? I'd like to see something that, rec uh, that represents peace, togetherness, something. You know, what's interesting that you say that, Karen, growing up in New Orleans, Lee Circle was a place that you met at Mardi Gras. You know, it, where, where are we going to meet? Meet me at Lee Circle. So it has that connecting piece to it already. But what we, what we have to do is at least make it something that represents something that makes us a little more connected or, or, or happy about it. But yes, it needs to be something that represents progression and the future of this city as well. Okay, our first round is now over. 